We get asked rather often about digital re-releases of old games. Actually, that's not true, nobody ever asks us anything, but I like to imagine that if this turgid little show ever developed a fan base, that's the kind of thing people would ask us about. This is because people, generally speaking, are stupid. 90% of the re-releases that find their way onto Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network and the Wii Virtual Console are running in an emulator. There's no actual port work being done, so there's nothing for us to talk about. But there are a few titles that make it to digital distribution that are actual, genuine ports. And this week, we'll be looking at a handful of ports on Xbox Live Arcade. Let's start with... Doom! This is what people remember. Large maps, tons of baddies, a killer rock soundtrack and a fistful of- Wait, does, does anyone else have a feeling of deja vu? Doom is one of those games that has been ported to basically every system ever, and the 360 is no exception. Doom hit Xbox Live Arcade in September of 2006, less than a year after the service launched on the 360, and as you can see it's more or less the same as the PC version, with the addition of twin stick controls to better suit your modern FPS aficionado. Of course, because Doom isn't one long corridor punctuated with cutscenes and quick time events, your modern FPS aficionado probably has no fucking clue what they're supposed to do. Doom 2 was released on Xbox Live 500 years later. Nobody's really sure why it took id Software so long to get the game out, but it probably has something to do with its acquisition by Zenimax in 2009. Or maybe it doesn't. Who the fuck knows? These Doom ports also found their way into Doom 3 BFG edition for the PC, 360 and PS3 because no one in their right mind would have bought a re-release of Doom 3 on its own. Because it's shit. These are fairly faithful ports with very little in the way of bells and whistles. I deem these ports acceptable. Moving on, here's Sega's immensely popular open world what the fuck em up mentally disturbed vehicle for hire. Originally a 1999 arcade game, it was released for the Dreamcast in 2000. After the Dreamcast fell into a chasm of its own shit, it was re-released on the PS2 and the GameCube by acclaim. Nearly 10 years later, it was ported by Sega to the Xbox 360. Oh dear. Crazy Taxi hasn't aged well. The controls are traumatising, the physics are harrowing, but it's a game with nostalgia on its side. So, surely re-releasing it on modern consoles is a good idea, right? Well, no, not really. This is technically speaking a good port. It looks and feels like the original version of the game. The problem is that the original version of the game is shit. The physics are still broken, the graphics are embarrassing, and if that wasn't depressing enough, the game can't even rely on the nostalgia card anymore. Crazy Taxi is very much a product of the late 90s, featuring product placement from the likes of Pizza Hut and KFC, and music from The Offspring and Bad Religion, all of which has been stripped out of this version of the game, leaving the experience feeling rather gutted. It's a bit like returning to your childhood bedroom and finding all the posters have been taken down, your stuff's been put in storage, and it's not actually your house anymore and could you please leave before the current owners call the police. I find this version to be a bit crap. Our next game is the GameCube exclusive Resident Evil 4, which has since become the least exclusive game ever released, with ports on the PlayStation 2, the PC, the Wii, the iPhone, the iPad, the PS3, and of course, the Xbox 360. Capcom, eh? Bless them. Whenever a Resident Evil game gets ported to a new system, Capcom usually tries to include something new and unique, and all of the additions from previous ports have found their way into this version, with the added bonus that the visuals are now in full HD. So that's nice. This port represents the definitive version of the game, but like Crazy Taxi, it hasn't aged very well. It has terrible controls by today's standards, with a woefully inefficient button layout that you can't make any changes to. That and, you know, the game's just not fun anymore. Plus, Resident Evil 4 is single-handedly responsible for the death of the survival horror genre, so I am contractually obliged to hate it. But, okay. I'm not here to assess the game itself, I'm here to assess the port, and this port is basically alright. Our final game this evening, or possibly this morning or this afternoon, I don't know what bloody time you're watching this, is Sonic CD for the Sega CD, or the Sega Mega CD, if you're lucky enough not to be an American. Not that being an American is shit or anything, please don't shoot me, it's just, you know, you guys didn't half draw the short store during the 90s, did you? I mean, the, the Mega Drive gets renamed to the, the Genesis, your Super Nintendo looks like a cinder block, the Chaos Engine got renamed to Soldiers of Fortune, I... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting derailed. Um, I just, I just feel bad for you, but, but I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine.
Previous Xbox Live Arcade releases of 2D Sonic games have been emulated, but Sonic CD is an honest-to-goodness port. The game has been rebuilt entirely from scratch by freelance coding genius Christian Whitehead, allowing for new features such as widescreen support, the option of using the arguably superior physics from Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and even the inclusion of Sonic's hetero life partner Tails as an unlockable character. It even includes both the American and Japanese soundtracks to the game, giving players the choice of which terrible, terrible music to listen to as they play their little hedgehog game. I've never been a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, probably because I'm allergic to fun, or maybe it's because I'm a Mario fanboy. It doesn't matter whether that's true or not, once the Sonic fanboys get wind of this video they'll lob that accusation at me anyway. But this is probably a perfect port. It's a vast improvement over the original that adds new features, accentuates what made the original so good, and doesn't break anything. Surprisingly decent. Right, that's it. Join me next week when I'll be playing literally anything else. Goodbye. Shit.